Hey guys, welcome to my video on cost minimization. Uh, in this video, I give you this production function, f of kL equals 100k to the 0.6l to the 0.4, a rental rate on capital, and a wage. And what we're going to do is we're going to solve for the marginal rate of technical substitution, the optimal capital labor ratio at these prices, and the cost minimizing bundle, and the minimum cost for producing 10,000 units of the good. So by the end of this, all of those will be completed. So let's get to it. We're gonna start with picture. Uh, my class, we use a little bit of calculus, but we don't really do like hardcore calculus. We're not gonna set up Lagrangians. We're gonna be guided by a picture instead. So we've got this ISO cost line, which represents every point, every pair of capital and labor that has the same cost. And I can draw infinity of these for every possible cost level but every point along this line has the same cost. And I'm gonna draw this isoquant curve. And every point along this curve has the same quantity of output. Uh, these are the results of setting the production function equal to a specific value. In this case, we're gonna draw an isoquant curve where every single pair of capital and labor on that curve leads to producing 10,000 units of our good. Why 10,000? Because that's what our question was asking about. What's the cost minimizing bundle for setting Q equal to 10,000? Okay, and so you've seen this. You've probably seen this picture in your book where there's your L star and your K star, and that's the optimum bundle. But how do we solve for it? Let's walk through the steps. We need two conditions. One, the slopes of the two lines have to be equal, the isoquant and the isocost. That is necessary for that sort of tangency condition. The other thing that needs to be true is that we need to make 10,000 units of our good. If we make less, it'll cost less, but we're ignoring the fact that we have to make 10,000. If we make more, it'll cost more, and we're making extra, I don't know, it just, the question asks about making 10,000, so we're gonna make that be part of the answer. So part one. We're going to set the slopes of these two lines equal to each other. Set the slope of the iso, iso cost equal to the slope of the iso quant. Those two things have to be equal to each other. So let's figure it out. What's the slope of the iso cost line? The iso cost, its slope is negative r over w. But anyway, that's the slope of the iso cost line. In this specific case, that's minus 50 over 100, which is minus 1 half. Boom, there's the slope of your ISO cost. And on a graph like this, with L on the vertical axis and K on the horizontal axis, it will always be R over W. Now what about the slope of the ISO quant? This one's a little bit messier. The slope of the ISO quant is the negative MRTS of K and L. And we need to solve for MRTS then. MRTS is equal to the marginal product of capital divided by the marginal product of labor. And the negative MRTS is the slope of the isoquant line. So let's get our marginal products. If you forgot how to get those, marginal product of capital is the derivative of your production function with respect to K. In this case, that's 0 0.6 times 100 times K to the negative 0.4 times L to the 0.4. Uh, this is just an application of our power rule uh, with a multidimensional function. And then let's see, this simplifies to 60 times k to the negative 0.4 times out of the 0.4. What about the MPL? Derivative of the production function with respect to L is equal to 0.4 times 100 times k to the 0.6 times L to the negative 0.6 equals 40 times k to the 0.6 times L to the negative 0.6. Combine these two things together, and what do you get? MPL over MPK equals 60 over 40 times K to the negative 0.4 times L to the 0.4 divided by K to the 0.6 times L to the negative 0.6. That simplifies to 3 halves times L to the 0.4 times L to the 0.6 divided by K to the 0.4 times K to the 0.6. I moved the negative exponents. If you move them from the numerator to the denominator, or from the denominator to the numerator, the negative part of the exponent goes away. Which this comes out to be 3 halves times L over K. 
that's your marginal rate of technical substitution. And the negative MRTS is the slope of the isoquant, so minus 3 halves times L over K. That's the slope of your isoquant. We're going to set that equal to minus R over W to get our first condition. Minus R over W equals negative MRTS. Set these two things equal to each other. Minus 1 half equals negative 3 halves times L over K. Math happens. We simplify it. Blah, blah, blah. You get K equals 3L. Or L equals a third K. It doesn't matter. Now, this ratio is really important to us. This tells us that in order for the slopes to be equal to each other, like they are here in this tangency condition, we need to have K equal to 3L. We need three times as much capital as labor for those two things to be equal to each other, those two slopes. So K equals 3L is going to imply the slopes are equal, and now let's move forward. The next thing we needed is to remind ourselves that parallel or equal slopes is not enough. We also need to focus on reaching this Q equals 10,000 indifference curve. Because I could have isocost lines like this. They're parallel at some point, K equals 3L, but they're not the tangency point. Same with this one. Same with that one. There's infinity of these, but I'm only interested in this one. That's the one I want. And so I need to focus on this isocost line where Q equals 10,000. It's the only one that will give me the tangency condition. So I'm going to substitute my ratio, K equals 3L, into the production function, Q equals F of KL. So 10,000 is the Q we're targeting, equals 100 times K to the 0.6, L to the 0.4, equals 10,000. Or sorry, 10,000 equals 100 times K to the 0.6, but K is equal to 3L. So let's plug 3L in there for K times L to the 0.4. Simplify it again. 100, I divided both sides by 100, equals 3L to the 0.6, L to the 0.4. 100 equals 3 to the 0.6, L to the 0.6, L to the 0.4. 100 divided by 3 to the 0.6 equals L star. I combined my two L's and divided by 3 to the 0.6. That is the optimal level of L, the cost minimizing level of L that gives us 10,000 units of production. And 3 times L is K. So 300 over 3 to the 0.6, that's K star. That is your optimal bundle. Now we could simplify or we could approximate it if you want actual numbers. That's fine. Uh, depends on your teacher. Some like precise numbers, some like rounding. Uh, let's see. But our bundle is the pair of K star and L star. Quantities of our inputs. How much does the bundle cost? This was our last part of our question. Well, our cost function is RK plus WL. So that's 50 for R times K star plus 100 for W times L star equals 50 times 300 over 3 to the 0.6 plus 100 times 100 over 3 to the 0.6. Which means our cost is equal to 25,000 divided by 3 to the 0.6. Which is approximately 12,932.05. Boom. And with that, we've done it all. So yeah, what did we do? We first got our MRTS, got the capital labor ratio by setting the slope of the two curves equal to each other. We got the cost minimizing bundle and the minimum cost for producing 10,000 units of the good. Um, yeah, I hope this is helpful to you. Oh man, MPL. I said derivative with respect to L earlier, but I wrote it wrong. Hopefully you got that. If not, well, now you go. There you go. All right, set our slopes equal to each other, got an optimal ratio, and we're going to substitute that ratio into production function for the quantity that we're focused on. 
So, hope it's helpful to you. If not, too bad. But thanks for watching anyway, guys. Good luck and happy econing.